Albert Einstein's involvement in the creation of the atomic bomb. Well, I guess the, the first thing is the equation E equals MC squared. And you could argue that fission is an exceptional case, but it just gives you an idea of how much energy is locked away in stuff. So C is the speed of light, which is three by 10 to the 10 centimeters per second, I think. And if you square that, multiply it by itself, you end up with an astronomically vast, incomprehensible number. So if you then multiply how much an object weighs its mass by that huge number, then you get an idea of the amount of energy that's potentially locked away in there. So if you like, he's the one that got everybody thinking about the invisible energy locked away inside the atom. And this then lays the ground for Otto Frisch demonstrating, first of all, theoretically, with a lovely lady called Lisa Meitner, who was actually his aunt, uh, this huge blast of energy that's blast, that pushed out whenever the uranium nucleus falls in, in half, and then he was actually able to measure it. Um, in terms of the <clears throat> development of the weapon, he was persuaded by a group of Hungarian refugee physicists who moved to America, as he did. They were all handed out of Nazi Germany by uh, a very bizarre movement called the Deutsche Physik, the German physics movement, which was set up in the 1920s by a couple of disaffected Nobel Prize winners. They were quite bright people, but they were completely twisted in their interpretation of what physics and science was all about. And they just decided that anything to do with abstract mathematical Jewish junk, that's what they described it as, uh, had to be got rid of. So they set out to purge uh, pure Aryan German physics of the contamination, as they saw it, of Jewish physics. So Einstein was one of the more conspicuous ones to go. Uh, less conspicuous characters include much of many of the British cast who ended up at Los Alamos. Um, Einstein was persuaded to write this uh, supposedly pivotal letter to President Roosevelt, which he did in, uh, in August 1940. And nothing happened for quite a long time because, I mean, it's, it descended into farce. Rather than simply putting the letter in the post or delivering it by hand, uh, they decided that it would be given to a personal friend of the president who would deliver it by hand for added impact. And unfortunately, the aide that they chose was an economist who was completely ignorant about nuclear physics and it was a total windbag. And this man, who again knew nothing about what was actually in the letter, the letter was very plainly written and Roosevelt was no dummy, so he would have understood exactly what Einstein, one of the world's greatest thinkers, was getting on about. There would have been no problem in communication at all. But this man, the economist Alexander Sachs, decided he'd rewrite the whole thing and then deliver it to Roosevelt as a monologue. So he took weeks and weeks to do that. It wasn't until uh, early October so many weeks after the letter was written that Sachs finally got to see Roosevelt and he delivered his monologue so badly, it was in the evening, Roosevelt was tired, that Roosevelt nodded off and they had to finish off over breakfast the next morning. And during the night, apparently, Sachs was really taking it seriously. He wandered around his hotel room, he wandered out into the hotel garden to meditate. He sought divine inspiration, what he should say. And the next morning, he trotted out an anecdote about how Napoleon had uh, doomed himself to defeat by sending away an American who'd invented a steamboat. And this then set Napoleon up for defeat by the British Navy. And at that point, Roosevelt said, ah, do you mean that the Nazis are gonna blow us up with their bomb and sacks? For once being succinct said, yes, Mr. President, that's exactly it. So Roosevelt said, well, this demands action, so let's do it. Uh, and again, the action was the foundation of this hopelessly dysfunctional uranium committee that took them absolutely nowhere. So Einstein played a pivotal role in getting the ball rolling in the US. Um, he was invited to various meetings of the uranium committee, but he never went to any of them. And I think the reason for that is revealed after the war, when he said that one of the greatest regrets of his life was having suggested that the US should make an atomic weapon. And he, like many others in the story, had great difficulty living with that on his conscience.